Yep. Ryan. Howdy. We are back for another weekly update. How goes it? Going well. Yeah. Um, we've got the, everybody can see on camera, the Track Rail 7, which is currently on sale through the month of April with Track. Um, you can have one shipped to the mountain bike shed. Uh, it comes with a Bosch Line CX motor in it. Um, that's a 250 watt motor uh, with what, a 625 watt hour battery. Yeah, so pretty cool bike here. Customer just ordered this, had it sent to the shop. We got it built up for them. Um, we hooked it up to the Bosch software. Um, so I figured we kind of, not really much else. Obviously the weather's been nice. People are riding their bikes around, but I thought it would be a little bit more interesting for us to just kind of run through this by, we don't typically keep the e-bikes here in store. We can always get e-bikes for customers within a couple of days. Um, but um, yeah, not always does everybody get a chance to look at them. So what were, you built this up today. What were kind of your initial thoughts with it? Uh, yeah, so I noticed uh, initially it was packaged really, really well. There's like, four or five layers of cardboard all the way around the box. So that was nice to see that it was just packaged really well for starters. Uh, I pulled it out of the box and it wasn't super heavy. I was able to just pull it right out of the box in one hand, throw it in the stand. I uh, got it all built together. Everything went together pretty good and was pretty well adjusted out of the box, which is nice to see that they didn't just, you know, throw it together in a box and hand it off to me to really fine tune it. It was pretty fine tuned from the factory. So I just, double checked everything, made some little tiny tweaks and turns. And uh, then I was able to go out and burn in the brakes on it. That was really impressive. Cause I, I personally ride an e-bike also. Uh, my e-bike has also a 250 watt battery, but uh, it's got 35 Newton meters at the crank. Mm -hmm. Whereas this rail seven has 85 Newton meters at the crank. So that was super noticeable. Uh, it was cool to ride one that's over double the power of mine. So uh, yeah, it was awesome burning in the brakes. Like when I was riding, dragging the brake at first, I felt like I wasn't even dragging the brake. It was still, it was still taking off like an e-bike. So that was super cool. Uh, that was a kind of uh, like a window into how well it's going to climb. I'm sure it climbs like a beast. So uh, yeah, initial uh, initial impressions after day one, pretty sweet bike. I was stoked with it. Yeah. So just to kind of run through the build of this bike real quickly on the front end, you've got the RockShox. Uh, Domain, which is the 38 mil stanchion fork from RockShox, uh, that's 160 mil. Correct. That yeah. was another thing I like about this bike is the 160, 150 front and rear setup, which I personally think is the sweet spot for like most mountain bikes in America. Uh, I mean, I went to downhill parks all around with a 160, 150 setup, and I only bottomed out whenever I was making a big nose heavy mistake. So I think 160, 150 is pretty sweet because it's not like pedaling against all the 170 that people are trying to, to make popular these days. I think 170 is a bit overkill. So the suspension setup on this bike is, is right in the sweet spot. Yeah, especially for St. Louis. I think once you start getting into like the 170s, like with some of the power flies, stuff like that, those bikes start getting really long. This bike has a really kind of, um, you know, in my opinion, kind of a real stout appearance to it. Uh, it looks compact for being a 160 mil travel bike. Uh, you still get APB on the back of these these e-bikes as well. The reason that's important, I think one of the nice things about an e-bike is um, with the motor mounted down low, it gives you an extra bit of weight there and it helps really keep e-bikes grounded on a mountain bike trail. Yeah. Then you combine that and it, there's a lot of extra weight though too that's kind of being tossed around. So combining that with Trex APB system is going to give you really good wheel traction. You're going to actually be able to utilize your suspension. Close to like maybe on a normal e-bike, you're tapping your brakes before you get into a rock garden, you're compressing your suspension. Now you've got an extra 50 pounds of, or an extra 25 pounds of bike more than right. you normally would, plus your weight and all that. So it really can pack those down and make these bikes sometimes feel kind of couchy or heavy. Um, whereas with the APB, we're pulling those braking forces out so that suspension is able to do what it's supposed to do out back, um, which I think is really cool, really neat. And one of the advantages to riding an e-bike is your ability just to be just glued to everything, you know. Right, right. I liked how you mentioned that the weight's like right where you want it and down and near the bottom bracket. Because I noticed that a ton whenever uh, I took my e-bike to a downhill park and I had an analog and an e-bike there that day. So it was super cool to run the e-bike on the downhills. And I actually found I only weigh like 130 something. So I'm a pretty light rider off the bat. And I found that when I was riding downhill on my e-bike, I almost preferred that extra weight down right where I wanted it anyway. I felt definitely more confident on the trails and 
and more stable in the air and whatnot. So I was amazed that having more weight actually like increased my riding experience and made me feel more confident, able to go faster and whatnot at a downhill park in that environment. But just goes to show like more weight isn't always just like you're hauling around dumbbells, you know, it actually does help out when it's in the right place. Yeah, and you know, I, I and it also helps. You know, anytime you're kind of hitting the lip of a jump, a you've got that. A lot of times, you'll find yourself breaking into jumps that maybe normally you would be pedaling in on a normal bike, just because, I guess, with you're coming into things faster typically. Mm -hmm. um, but with that pedal assist, kind of at the lip of the jump, you get a little bit of boost sometimes, whether you need it or not. Um, so maybe be cautious of that on the first few rides. But once you put these e-bikes in the air, you think like, oh, they're heavy, you know. This is going to be terrible to jump. Not at all. They actually really glide through the air beautifully. Again, because that weight just where how that weight's distributed on the frame, it makes the bike really stable in the air. So you tend not the bike's not moving around as much in the air. So it can make it a little bit easier um, to jump as well when you're on an e-bike. Right, um, and it, like this bike uh, on the website checks out at uh, 52 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was still able to bunny hop it every bit of six inches in the parking lot. So it's not unmanageable at all. Yeah. And that's a, you know, and with this customer he came into the shop, we talked about, you know, he wanted to look into an e-bike. He's been mountain biking for a while. Um, he's got a nice bike already, but he wanted to step into the e-bike and it's, it's going to be his second bike. So, um, and I talk about that a lot with the customers and kind of my big warning is these bikes are heavy. They're 50 pounds. Um, that you don't feel that riding them. They actually feel really nice riding them and they mm -hmm. feel nice in the air and pedaling and going downhill. Um, where you notice they're heavy is when you stop your bike and you're moving it around, when you, you're loading it on the car, when you're in the garage, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah that was the wor that's the worst thing about my e-bike is just putting it in my car because I don't mm -hmm. have a bike rack right now. So I had to take the wheels off and lift the frame up into the car and it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's a, a little bit money. heavy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for those like that are really wanting like the supernatural biking experience with just a little flick of power up the hills, Trek does make the fuel and the EXE mm -hmm. a little bit lighter, a little bit less torque, but handles a lot more like your regular bike. So that's something we can maybe check out too in the future. Yeah, the EXE is super dope. Um, it doesn't really, it's hard to even tell it's an e-bike because right. the, the new fuel EX and the Gen 6, which the EXE is on, um, kind of has that earlier bottom bracket area anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it is really stealthy, and then it comes with that super silent TQ motor, the Fuel XE does. Um, here on the uh, rail, we've got a Bosch power system. Truck's been using a Bosch power system for a very long time, and there's a specific reason for that. Um, you know, I think most people who are going to be um, shopping e-bikes are curious in this one. Um, you know, you're not looking at like the Bafangs or any of the cheaper low end stuff anyway, but Bosch is the top of the premium motor. So Bosch is the only UL listed uh, electric motor company. Um, so that's the underwriter's laboratory. So if you're worried about, oh, I'm gonna have this e-bike and this big battery in my garage and charging, which you should not leave your battery in the garage, especially summer, winter, um, take your battery out, bring it inside. You don't want it in those weather things. We've got a really cool diagnostic tool. So Bosch not only you all list them, um, so that way you know everything meets safety standards. Like like every lamp you buy has got a UL sticker on it. Every Christmas light you buy has got a UL sticker on it. For some reason, uh, the e-bikes that you buy don't have the, the UL sticker on them unless you get a Bosch power system. So that'll all probably be changing here in the next year or two. I think some requirements are gonna come down um, that where e-bike companies have to, to meet those standards. But Bosch does, you get that added security there. Um, the diagnostic tools are absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna throw you on our computer screen. If you wanna show, so our main part supplier is Quality Bicycle Parts. Basically every bicycle shop in the US uses them. The reason why that's important, if you buy a bike that's got a Bosch power system on it, if you're traveling and you're you know, out west riding, uh, maybe you're in Sedona or whatever it may be, um, and you have an issue with your e-bike, any bike shop, it doesn't have to be a truck dealer, it can be any bike shop, I don't care if they only sell used bikes, they're gonna have a QBP account and they can order and get parts within two to three days for you. Um, so that can be a huge plus, maybe even rush them, depending on if you're out west, you might be really close to Colorado, the QBP Colorado warehouse. Um, but any shop can get those for you. They can get every Bosch part. For me as a bike shop owner, that's a really big deal because a lot of these companies, like we're, we've been dealing with trying to get a display for one of these um, for the high bike motors. Yeah. 
for forever and it's cost us a lot of money getting the wrong parts, just a whole process. So Bosch streamlines that um, by allowing all their parts are listed. Every part you can need um, is on QVP site. So the accessibility of parts is easy and then our ability to figure out if you do have a problem. Uh, Bosch has got an excellent diagnostic tool. So Bosch actually goes around to every single bike shop. We were not allowed to start selling track e-bikes and with Bosch power systems before we got certified. So Bosch had to send a representative out. We scheduled that a few weeks in advance. Um, it was a three hour training to kind of go through um, how to use their diagnostic software, how to provide the best situation or the best you know um, experience for our customers. So we can really dive deep in there and through their diagnostic tools, if you do ever come up with an issue, which we really don't see many issues with the actual electric systems of these bikes but if it does we plug it right into the computer uh, we get a full readout about what's going on with the bike the conditions it's been in uh, maybe if you're if you're you know how your riding style how we, we can help you get a more battery out of your bike um, but we can basically break down every part from that diagnostic tool it will tell us if something's wrong with it down to i think there's two different connections out of all of them that we can't touch so uh, or that we can't see in that diagnostic tool. So all we gotta do is plug it in. If something is wrong with the bike, it's gonna tell us exactly where that problem is. Then we can go on quality bike parts and have you apart within two days. So that's huge when it comes to these e-bikes, especially because then, the, you know, especially when people look at some of the off brands, it really starts getting shady, mucky waters on um, any problems. How long have you had your e-bike? Have you had any problems with it? I've had my e-bike for a little bit over a year. I've had not a single problem with it that you wouldn't have on a regular bike, like brake rub and shifting adjustments. Uh, I do have a little tiny bit of side-to-side -side lateral play in my cranks where like the main spindle shifts. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal bikes have specialized back when I used to be with that company. And so I talked to them about it and it's within range. And so as soon as the play goes like above two millimeters, they're gonna replace it on the house. So. Right now, I'm just kind of waiting for that play to get worse so I can warranty that. But other than that, it's a half a millimeter play in the bottom bracket. So, like, I don't even feel it when I'm riding. It's nothing. And that was, like, right whenever Specialized was, like, really anxious to launch that new product as soon as they could. So, I think they've probably fixed that by now. But, but yeah, that was the only problem I had with mine. Yeah, and that's one thing that people really need to keep in mind with these e-bikes. You know, I really, I, I, I know that our customers simply do not a majority 95 percent of our customers don't do the amount of maintenance they should do their bike especially full suspensions right but when we're talking e-bikes not only is the suspension and all the pivots and you know you need to be torque checking your bolts make sure everything's where it should be make sure things aren't moving you know between every ride wipe down your bike then get your tool set out get your park tool allens out we sell them here at the shed you can get nice t-handles just like we use in the shop um, but at least put a tool on every bolt and just make sure things aren't moving. You don't need to put torque and force into them. Um, we don't want to, you know, if something does have thread lock, it's not doing any good. If you tighten it an extra eighth of an inch, you probably just broke the thread lock. So mm -hmm. we just want you to put, put your, you know, a tool on these bolts, make sure they're not moving. You'll feel if they loosen up. I think we sell uh, the five Newton meter preset handles too, don't we? Yep. So yep. We have those. And then, you know, on your suspension, I would actually put in the torque specs and actually yeah. make sure those are all at torque um, as far as like your rocker goes and your shock mounts, anything along those lines. So, yeah, people should be doing that. And then your drivetrain is also something to keep in mind um, on an e-bike. Um, there is more torque going through everything. So, you know, making sure that your cranks are on tight before a ride, making sure that your cassette is fully tightened on. Probably using, sure, a, using a chain checker after every like 10 rides or so is a good idea, especially with an e-bike. Absolutely. So yeah, make sure you're checking your chain. You're going to, it's going to stretch and wear faster because that initial torque is just going to put a lot more force um, on these bikes. So yeah, you're going to have to change your chain more often, which is fine. Chains are 30, 40 bucks, not a big deal. Um, you know, so yeah, chain checker, Making sure, you know, depending on the setup of the bike, making sure like your chain ring bolts, if you have those are tight, making sure your derailleur, um, that the, the, you know, bolt holding onto your hanger or onto your frame, make sure those are all staying in tight because just a little bit of movement on there is enough. I think a lot of people have an issue. I've seen it a lot on e-bikes where um, under big force, it'll jump on them. And sometimes it's just because, sometimes it's because things are actually worn out. 
Um, but a lot, sometimes it's just because things are not properly tightened down, uh, things loosened up over time. Again, we're dealing with all these extra forces. These kind of, they're typical bikes, but there's extra forces being asked of them. So we just gotta pay better care and better attention to our bike and, and make sure, because if we catch these things early, before you go on a ride, then your bolt doesn't fall off and other things don't strip out. Because that's what happens to people. They don't really notice something, then you're out for a ride, it's making a little noise, and you're like, oh, maybe I can make it back. Next thing you know, something falls off, it strips it, and then we're looking at $300 worth of repairs and you're not getting to ride your right. bike. For Another long. big thing I noticed with, uh, with e-bikes is tire pressure is even more important than, I mean, it's already important on all bikes, but with an e-bike, sometimes like you don't pick up that back end and you're just like, well, let the suspension do its work. You plow into like the sharp edge of a rock or something. And I've like, I've been ridden on 25 PSI because again, I'm like 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've, I've dented rims at 25 PSI. So I think with e-bikes, I, I usually ride them at least like two PSI higher in the rear than I would on an analog bike. Yeah, and then people can get into a rail for under four grand right now with the sale going on, which is awesome. This bike, um, this is a rail seven, so it's priced a little bit higher than that. Um, and you're getting that, that getting the domain fork, um, getting the XT drivetrain. Uh, this bike has it, your cassette on the rear. Um, so typically that kind of concerns me. I would rather see an XT cassette back there. Um, so maybe that's an upgrade that, that um, the, the customer who grabbed this bike will end up doing at some point. But these components are all going to probably wear a little bit faster anyway. So I'd give it its life and then uh, when you go to, to replace it after, you know, five or six chains, um, then replace it with an XT to get a little bit smoother shifting out of it. Uh, but it shifts really nice. Still an XT drivetrain on the back, four pop brakes, um, rock shocks front and rear. I mean, just really cool bike. So this is kind of like the mid. Um, if you want to go with a little bit more kind of XC, you can go with the 150 mil travel Fuelia XE, a little bit lighter, a little bit quieter motor, um, or um, the Powerfly is still out there uh, for the little bit bigger travel, a little bit longer slacker bike. So I think the rail and why our customer picked it um, was it was a bike that would, it would ride, it'd be snappy around here. Um, but then when he takes trips down to Bentonville, if he goes out west and rides, places where he's really going to want to put in a lot of miles in a day and he's really going to need that e-bike, that this bike's going to be fully capable um, of all that stuff. So, um, yeah, cool bike. Uh, like I said, the Bosch system's neat. Uh, pull up the diagnostic real quick. Click on, it should be the last one on the arrow. Um, so, yeah, that's the, it's got the CX motor in it, so that's kind of their race performance motor. But go to the actual Bosch diagnostic tool that we used. Down at the bottom, where was that? bottom right. Is that this guy? A little, yeah. yeah. So this is the Bosch diagnostic tool. Go to the the overall or the health so we can see like battery temps and stuff like that. So we can get into all kinds of information um, within Bosch diagnostic system. So um, I think one of the big mistakes, like we had a customer, he had an e-bike, it was a Shimano motor, um, but he, he had the bike for about a year and he was getting, you know, 25 miles out of a charge, 20 miles out of a charge. Well, after about a year, it got down to be about 12 miles out of a charge before he was running on E, and he brought the bike in. He's like, what the heck is going on? Well, what we can do is when we plug these bikes in, we're actually able to, to look and see how are you using the bike? How much time are you spending in um, your boost levels? How many times or how many times has maybe the battery gotten overheated or too cold? Um, you know, what are your average revolutions, you know, per minute that you're pedaling the bike at? Because all these things are going to affect battery. Um, so, you know, like in this customer's case, he basically zapped his battery within a year. These batteries should last. Bosch says their batteries last 3,000 charge cycles. So essentially, Bosch states that these batteries should last 10 years, which is pretty impressive. I think on typical electronic um, vehicles and stuff like that, you're looking at somewhere close to like a thousand charge cycles, which would be three years, um, assuming you charge that bike every day. Um, but what was happening with this customer, um, he was on a hardtail and he was he was over, he, he was just in full power the entire time. Um, so that created some huge issues. When you're in, if you're on turbo mode the entire time you ride these e-bikes, that's a huge power draw. So you're really working that battery hard. You're going to wear it out and zap it out faster. So these bikes do come with a smart mode on them. Um, basically, it the the motor and the bike that 
it'll give you more or less power depending on what you need. So how hard are you pushing into the pedals? It says, well, he's obviously pushing really hard. He must be standing up. We're going to increase the power. So we're going to bump him up to turbo. And then, you know, when you're just, you know, kicking back and not as hard, the torque sensors aren't feeling you as hard on those pedals, then it's going to have it um, in the, the more eco mode or like a touring mode. So it's going to automatically vary your power levels for you, which on a mountain bike is huge because you'll kind of forget or you just need one last button to press. So you set it in that smart mode and it's automatically going to help you make it through. And if you do that, you're going to get pretty consistently 25. How many miles are you getting out of your e-bike milestone? Uh, well, mine has smart ride, so I can tell it how long I want to ride, the elevation, the distance, what I want to have left at the end, and it won't let me burn my battery out. Right. Uh, but I've gone without doing that smart ride, just like full power. Right. I do have the same, uh, I have a smaller battery than that bike, and I'm getting like 40 miles if I wanted to. Right. So, and you're being pretty cautious then. And I would venture to guess most of our customers are probably going to use a little bit more power or something like that. But yeah, I don't know yeah. if I'd say cautious. I'm I probably in, am guilty of riding in turbo a lot. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, plenty of mileage out of these e-bikes. Then um, Ryan's had a great experience. Taser for a bit. Um, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I ended up getting rid of it um, and not enjoying it as much long term, just because it was a bit of a heavy bike. So. I think e-bikes make a really great second bike for folks. Um, or, you know, if you've been riding or, you know, my other thing when I tell customers is like, I'm not a social rider. So when I go mountain bike, I'm gonna be alone. I don't wanna, you know, I love seeing, I see customers and stuff. It's cool to see them in, in the woods, not that. But I don't go, I don't call up my buddies when I wanna ride a mountain bike and be like, hey, let's go riding. I want to go by myself. Right, so I, I do call up buddies. I'll go ride with him. One of my buddies who I love riding with, he races cross country. <laughs> and so he blows me out of the water all the time. Yeah. And before I had my e-bike, like we couldn't even talk. I'd be like, hey man, let's go ride. And then I would just watch him pull away from me for two hours. And now I can actually stay next to him. We can hold conversations while we're riding. And I'm right there with him and vice versa. Like he'll be right behind me. Like I can't pull away from him on the e-bike. I could be in turbo mode and he's right there on my tail still. So it really... Me having the e-bike makes us a lot more equal in, in terms of riding ability. Yeah. So that was cool because I can, I can ride with more people and talk to them throughout the ride instead of just feeling like I got to catch up the whole time. Yeah, and that's, I think, the big thing. And that's, that's where it comes important. I have to remember that most people are social and they do like to ride with friends. So the e-bike is that awesome equalizer as well. If you do have faster friends or maybe your friend doesn't have two kids at home and a wife and other responsibilities. So they're riding their bike every day right. and you're only getting out once a week or right. even twice a week. Right. And then you try, even if you're in good health and you know, got good fitness, you're still going to have a hard time keeping up with your buddy that rides every day. So yeah, it's really great to, to, if you are that guy who's always pulling up last on the hill that everybody's waiting on. And as soon as you get there, they take off again. You haven't caught your breath and you're like, oh. so it is really neat for that situation. So, um, I think either as a second bike is a really good way to get an e-bike or um, if you're a social rider to be able to keep up with people, it's really great. Um, or if you're a person who travels a lot, whether you're going on a Bentonville or you're going on rides that require maybe a little bit more mileage so you can see more and do more in a shorter span of time, yeah. then the e-bike is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'd say it's a great second bike to get first honestly i think if i cool. was going to have to buy you know an analog and an e-bike i'd probably get the e-bike first mm, and then yeah. the analog bike just so you can get out you can do so much they cover so much ground and that was one thing i wanted to mention people so many people like oh like e-bikes cheating or this that and the other not at all because i'll go faster and farther and use more energy yeah. uh so yeah they're, they're a great time like out in when i was in arizona i would use my e-bike for just climbs and descents and i could usually get like one 3,000 foot climb and then a 3,000 foot 30 minute downhill run and that was it I'm gassed for the day and with the e-bike I could do two or three of those runs in only you know one and a half as much time no nope, I agree so if you're interested in e-bike uh, order one send it to the mountain bike shed we love when people do that it helps us out just the same go to mtbshed.com you can do any research on them feel free to give us a call or like this customer did before um, ordering his bike. He came in here 
had a 30, 45 minute conversation with us, um, got our input. We kind of asked him some, some vital questions to make sure it was going to be the right bike for him. Um, and then uh, he went home, ordered it, sent it to the shop, and then he'll get the same aftercare from the shed as he would as if he picked it off the floor. Again, those are only bikes that come here to the shop. And then as we wrap things up, uh, we do have the monthly giveaway going. So that's the first of every month at 8 p.m. You have to be on our live on Instagram or Facebook to win. If you made a purchase in store or shared the pin post for, for the monthly giveaway, um, then you are entered to win. Um, and normally we only get like 20 people are showing up in these lives. We call five names. So your, your odds go from like our, you know, 150, 200, whatever it is, people that get entered that month for all their in-store purchases. And they could literally just be a Red Bull. Um, but since there's only 20 people in that room, you know, your odds just get five times better at that point. So really cool. Check into that. Um, come by, make a purchase. You can make a purchase every day. It could be under 30 times. You have a couple customers who they pass by here on their way home from work. So um, they stop into the shop, they grab a Red Bull, they grab just little stuff they need, they say hi, um, and then they carry on their way. So that's really cool. We're, we're stoked we get to see our customers coming in and do that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to give away a Garmin for under 55 to everybody. Any final words? Should everyone buy an e-bike from an e-bike man? Is an e-bike the way to go? More often than not, yes. It's not for absolutely everybody, but it's for most people. <laughs> Buy an e-bike, send it to the shed.